And with that, I will turn you over to Mr. Kaisal, and thank you for joining us today. So, there is a well-documented phenomenon amongst astronauts, where when they first go up into space, and they gaze down at this little blue marble of ours, they all report this profound sense of realization. And these realizations are usually about how invisible the lines of our nations are, about how petty the squabbles and conflicts we get into are, and how obvious it is that humanity only has this one little planet, this gigantic universe, to take care of and protect. I've never been to space. And fortunately for those of us who haven't gone into orbit, uh, we don't need to you know, be in, yeah, so far removed to gain a little perspective. And so today I'm going to walk you through three of my favorite thought exercises that can yield some insight about your own life and what really matters. Uh, a good place to put them would be in one of those day of weekly reviews. So we'll start with a, a really fun one. Imagine that you have a clone, an evil clone, right? They are identical to you in every possible way, with your likes and dislikes, your skills, every one of your goals is kind of in their mind as well. And the reason they're evil is that you're going to be competing throughout the rest of your life with this clone, right? The one difference is this clone is willing to cross every line that you are unwilling to cross. Right? If you're a very nice person, this clone is willing to be a little mean. Right? If you're a bit of a mean person, this clone might try to be nice. So the thought experiment is, what could this clone do that would absolutely terrify you? Right? And you don't have to go and do what the evil clone does, but sometimes it helps to know what your competition is up to. Sometimes those are good ideas that have been maybe locked away in your subconscious or that hiding away in a blind spot. So, the evil clone. Second thought experiment, and you can tell I've made these a little bit more interesting than the generic questions. Imagine you come across a genie, a little kind of lamp, you rub the lamp, the genie pops out. And as you're getting excited to make your wishes, it says, wait a second, I know you think you understand how this works, but we genies, we've been around for a while, that whole freemium giving wishes away for nothing thing didn't work out so well. So this is going to be a little different. You can wish for anything you want, and you will absolutely get 100% success. But as a trade-off, everything bad that will happen that it could possibly happen along the way to that success will happen. So, example, if you want to make it on, uh, kind of succeed in Hollywood, you will absolutely succeed to your definition of success in Hollywood. But you will lose your privacy while doing it. Uh, your friends and family will not understand you. Uh, it might take making decisions that will haunt you for the rest of your life. But you will succeed. If you want to start a company, right? You will absolutely make that happen, but you're going to do it at the cost of alienating your friends and family. You're going to have to ask your employees to kind of sacrifice, make sacrifices that you're not comfortable with. You're going to live in doubt and agony over whether what you're doing is quite in the right direction, but you will succeed. So given this devil bargain, what would you be comfortable suffering? What would you be comfortable taking on uh, in exchange for your success? And I think this, this thought exercise, it, in some ways, is a definition of the life that we're born into, right? The kind of everything is possible, and yet everything also has an opportunity cost. And a lot of things are uh, particularly difficult. So final thought experiment, I think, gets at is a better way to think about one of the most useless questions in all of humanity. Right? Six words. Anyone want to guess at what this question is? What is? Meaning 
of life. The meaning of life. I think it's an absolutely horribly worded question because you can get almost nothing from it. You can't answer that correctly. So what I ask you guys to do instead, try to really just imagine yourself at the sunset of your life, right? Just a, like the more real you can make this, the better, right? What kind of a, are you outdoors? Are you indoors? Are you surrounded by friends and family? You know, what color is your hair? What, what kind of clothes are you wearing? Is there a scent in the air? Really make this real for you. And as you conjure up the kind of like the, the feelings and the memories of a, a life well lived, pull back to the present and think, what favors can I do today to make that person's life a little bit better? Right? This I think is the the alternative to going out in space and getting a little perspective is instead of gazing out over the entire world, is if we could gaze out just in true color our, and see our life in its totality, then that same overview effect takes place, right? That, that same feeling of what matters and what doesn't. So, that last one in particular uh, is a good one to chew on. I've had friends tell me that that convince them otherwise that they wanted to have kids. Very, very powerful if you, you know, take it and grapple with it. So, three thought experiments. Um, the, there's some assembly required, so I do recommend writing these down and, and kind of journaling or thinking about it in some, in some case. Um, but worst case scenario, you now have some interesting questions to throw out at the next cocktail party. So, <laughs> hope this has been useful. Next up, we have Grace Bozniak.